we certified the election back in November. But now it's time to say enough is enough. It is time to push back on the big lie. We must do this. We must do this as a member of the Republican Party. We must do this as a member of the Board of Supervisors. We need to do this as a country. Otherwise, we are not going to be able to move forward and have an election in 2022 that we can all believe the results, whatever they may be. Republicans in Arizona pushing back against the lies as this so-called audit of the 2020 election is underway. Trump over the weekend claimed the state's election database had been deleted. Of course, it hadn't. He also claimed ballots were missing. Of course, they're not. Still with us, however, David Pluff, Michael Steele. Michael, uh, I've got one more for you. Uh, this is uh, Lindsey Graham, who answers the question in this comment, uh, what does he have in common with the weather in Hawaii? If you don't like what's happening right now, wait 10 minutes and it'll change entirely. Uh, hear now the comments of Lindsey Graham. I accept the results of the election. I don't know what the audit is all about in Arizona. I don't know the details, but uh, I am ready to move on. 2020 is over for me. I'm ready to march on and hopefully take back the House and the Senate in 2022. Michael Steele, over to you. What do you make of it? Uh, just, just move past it. Uh, that's it's irrelevant what Lindsay thinks about that at this point. Uh, you know, any 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 of these folks who come out and and you know after this thing has been allowed to progress to this point, um, it's not important. It's, it's unfortunate that it's taken Republican local Republican officials this long to come out and say something. They need to just shut this down. Uh, you know, the, the, the supervisor's right. You know, this this will make it harder to conduct elections uh, in the future. And and the fact that you've got at least one party right now that is propping up this lie, uh, you know, you can move on, Lindsay, but the rest of us are stuck in this crazy because this nonsense is unfolding. Um, you, you can move on, but we've got, you know, 47 states that are changing the very laws that uh, will impact how people vote, where they vote, when they vote. Uh, so, you know, I, I just, I, I just don't want, I don't have time for that. I don't have time to dignify with responses to people who don't give a damn in the first place. You can shut this down just as easily as it started. Call Trump the liar he is, tell him to go off into that great sunset at Mar-a-Lago, let's rebuild this Republican party, make it, make it worth something, to be competitive so I can go up against David Pluff and have a real debate about health care and the environmental policy as opposed to silly crap like this in Arizona that everybody knows is just dumb. Or a debate about abortion, which brings me to my next question to <laughs> you, David, and that is in your party, which is sometimes famous for blue on blue attacks and eating its own young, might the prospect of a decision uh, a year from tonight on a landmark abortion case be a galvanizing issue for 2022 uh, turnout in the midterms for Democrats? Well, Brian, uh, the bigger issue there, of course, if the court were to render a verdict that would threaten Roe v. Wade, what that means for tens of millions of women around the country from healthcare is catastrophic. But yeah, I mean, I think it, it turns uh, what may seem like a notional threat uh, into reality. The fact that the case is even being heard, I think, can galvanize people. Obviously, if there's a negative decision, uh, it may create a movement uh, that lasts decades. So uh, I, yeah, I listen, I agree with Michael. One of the healthiest signs for this country is when Michael Steele and Stuart Stevens uh, and Steve Schmidt and all the people that I've squared off against, we can actually square off against each other again. Right now, we all have to be in this alliance of democracy versus autocracy. And listen, what's happening in Arizona, I agree with Michael, the truth is Lynn Cheney paid a price for it. Uh, sorry, Liz Cheney. But if more people did what the folks in Arizona did, they will find that the sun comes out. Uh, you can move on from Trump. I don't expect that because here's what you're going to see, Brian. Next year in most competitive House races, in most competitive Senate races, not all of them, There'll be some Republicans who say, I will respect the voters' decision. But I think a lot of them are going to feel they have to say what Trump did in their own election, which is if I don't win, uh, the election must not be legitimate. There must be fraud. 
And so just as we were dealing with the after effects of that uh, still today, much less in the hours and weeks after the presidential election, we could have that casting a huge shadow of the battle for the House and Senate. And so that's the test. Are we ever going to get to the point where those candidates say, whoever wins, wins, and I will concede if I'm not that person? Right now, that's not going to be the case. My thanks to these two gentlemen for this conversation, which we will have again and again. David Pluff, Michael Steele, thank you both for coming.